Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing 10 perfumes that would be perfect every single day, and I've separated them into two categories. The first group is a bit fresh and fruity. They remind me a lot of spring summer. The second group is a bit warm and cozy, and those perfumes remind me a lot of fall winter. Of course, you can wear whatever you want whenever you want. It all comes down to your personal preference, but it's a nice guide to give the video some organization. We have one more month of winter, so I'm starting with Warm and Cozy. These are perfumes that are perfect every day, including today. The first fragrance is Tom Ford Metalique. It's part of the Signature Collection, so this is not private blend. It's a lot less expensive, and that's something I did on purpose. I kept that in mind when creating this list. I didn't want anything with that extreme luxury or uber luxury price tag, because if you're wearing it every day, you're going to go through it a lot quicker. I think the perfect everyday fragrance is something you just spray with abandon. You don't want it to break the bank. And it doesn't matter how much you spray Tom Ford Metalique, it's never going to be overpowering. It's just a light fragrance from start to finish. It's beautiful. It has aldehyde, so it's kind of airy, sparkling right off the top, and then you get a lot of vanilla in the dry down. So it's just a pretty fragrance. You know you smell good, but it's a skin scent. It goes on like a light veil. Somebody has to be a bit closer to you to really pick up on it. It's a personal fragrance, but it's not overly sexy or sensual if you're returning to the office anytime soon. I think this is a very work appropriate fragrance. It has top notes of aldehydes, bergamot, and pink peppercorn, a heart of white blossoms, heliotrope, ambrette seed, peru balsam, and a base of vanilla and sandalwood. It's a unisex fragrance, although I personally find it to lean a bit feminine because it has that slightly sweet, almost powdery vanilla trail. I love the mixed metals of the bottle on Metalique. It feels cold to the touch and it just reminds me so much of a winter morning or a fresh fall morning. Stunning. I forgot how much I love this fragrance. I don't really wear it that often. I guess because it, it's not really the best match for the hot, humid Miami climate. We don't even get a true fall winter here, but it is so elegant and lovely. Not something that I would ever wear in the evenings or date nights. It's not a special occasion fragrance, although it is still very special. The next fragrance is warm and spicy. It is also unisex. Now, this I can see on a man or a woman. I don't think it necessarily leans feminine. It's Amber Nuit from Christian Dior. This is part of the Maison Dior collection, so it is a bit pricier than the other Dior perfumes, but you get a lot more juice. This is a 4.2 fluid ounce bottle. So for the price, the amount of product, especially if you're going to wear it every day, I think it justifies the price. And this is something you could absolutely wear every single day. I never get tired of this. And in, when I wear Amber Nui, I think it is incredibly feminine. It has top notes of grapefruit and bergamot, a heart of rose and pink peppercorn with warm amber in the base. And that is truly what is left lingering on your skin is warm amber. It's just a touch powdery, just a touch. If you don't like powdery fragrances, don't let that scare you. You wouldn't even necessarily notice unless you were comparing this fragrance with something else. That's how I discovered it, but it is there. And I think that makes it smell really elegant and elevated. Just like Metalique, it's never a strong fragrance. And you might think, especially by looking at it, it has this deeper caramel color, it has amber, it's a bit spicy. You might think it would be heavy, too heavy for every day, but it's not. It's scaled back just enough that it's not really cloying. There's nothing obnoxious about it. It's not going to give you a headache. And it's the type of fragrance that could give you a headache if it was too strong, but they played it just right. And I love that the mister is so fine. Mm. This is fall, winter in a bottle. It reminds me of gingerbread, going to maybe a farmer's market, picking out your pumpkin in the pumpkin patch, which I know we're a long way off from that. But it's that type of fragrance. It immediately makes me think of baked goods, the holidays, get togethers. It is that warm coziness of I'm back. We were not under attack, although it probably sounded like we were because Jazzy was going crazy. But as I was saying about this fragrance, Amber Nuit, 
it immediately smells like the holidays, get-togethers, just the most beautiful time of year. It's very nostalgic. Even if you don't have a lot of those memories, it just makes me think of Hallmark Christmas movies. It's beautiful. I would absolutely wear this every single day. My next everyday pick for fall winter might seem like an oddball, but hear me out. It's Coco Mademoiselle, and I have the Low Privé bottle, which is intended to be very sensual, bedtime fragrance, and instead I'm saying it's perfect for day. Well, I do have the Eau de Parfum. My bottle is incredibly old. I would not wear that fragrance any day, but you could absolutely replace the Low Privé with Coco Mademoiselle, the original, if you wanted to. But I do think that the Low Privé is kind of perfect for daily use. It's a very light, delicate interpretation of Coco Mademoiselle, but it hits all the same notes. It is still just as beautiful as the original. If you don't like a really heavy fragrance, why not wear the Low Privé, the bedtime perfume for a day? because it's a little bit softer. It's going to linger. Somebody has to be a little bit closer to you to really pick up on it. It's not going to be an overpowering fragrance. Some people find Coco Mademoiselle to be too much, even the original, not just the intense version. Well, in that case, the Low Privé would be perfect for you. That way it's not going to drive you crazy. Other people will smell it, but you're not going to smell it on yourself. It's a warm floral fragrance with keynotes of rose, jasmine, and white musk. so good. I love Coco Mademoiselle. It is so classic. And the Low Privé is not as light as you might anticipate if you've never tried it. It's not just a diluted eau de toilette, eau de cologne type of fragrance. It really does pack quite a punch for what it is. Beautiful. So elegant. It's not overly sexy. I think you could still wear this to the office. And another great thing about it is it comes in the really beautiful frosted classic Chanel bottle instead of that big square large boxy eau de toilette. So if you were going to pick up the eau de toilette anyways, you wanted something a little bit lighter, why not go with the Lil Privé? The bottle's a lot prettier. Another beautiful daily wear fragrance from Chanel is Paris Venice. It is so classic, perfect for fall winter because even though it's part of the Les Eaux collection, which is really fresh and fruity green, this fragrance has tonka, vanilla. So the dry down is a bit smooth, creamy, slightly warm. I think you could probably wear this year round. I just never really picked this up spring, summer. In my mind, this is a fall winter fragrance and it is lovely. It's available in two different sizes. So this is the larger size. It is 4.2 fluid ounces, but it's also available now in a 1.7 ounce bottle for $80. It's very affordable for a Chanel perfume. I remember being trained on this fragrance when it launched and they said that the bottle design was meant to be a bit bigger and it has the rounded sides so that it fits really nicely in your hand. And they made sure it had a really fine mist so you could just douse yourself. You can just spritz, spritz, spritz all over and head out the door. It is an eau de toilette concentration, so you can't really overdo it as much as you spray. It's never going to be too strong or overpowering. The little details. So soft. It's very feminine. You get neroli right off the top. Dry down is vanilla and tonka, so it makes your mouth water. I think this is the perfect everyday fragrance. Great for the office, great for running errands. You know you smell good when you walk into the room. It's a great feeling. I also think Paris Venice would be perfect for a first date, especially if it's a daytime date, because this isn't really an evening appropriate fragrance, but if you're just kind of feeling somebody out, you're not sure what to wear, Paris Venice, you cannot go wrong with this fragrance. The next fragrance begins our transition from fall, winter to spring, summer. It's Montal Roses Musk. I wasn't sure where to put this fragrance because it is a bit stronger and I think it is very sensual and makes a statement. Still perfect for daily wear, but it could be worn year round. I think it could absolutely be worn spring, summer, fall, winter, anytime. I think this is signature scent level. Incredible. Rose's Musk from Montal is one of the most elegant, feminine fragrances. It just smells like class. 
And I do think you could wear this in the evenings. It could be a date night perfume, a special occasion perfume. It's hard to slap a label on this. I think this could be an elevated brunch, baby shower, bridal shower, that sort of thing. Some sort of daytime special occasion. You wouldn't have to change your daily wear fragrance. But if you like to be a little bit extra, if you are a fancy lady and you just like to wear a killer perfume every single day, roses must. It has a top note of rose, middle notes of jasmine and rose, base notes of ambergris and musk. The mister is a little less refined than some of the others. That's okay. It's so good. Can't even sweat the details on this one. Heaven. Beautiful. It's bright, floral, very intense rose right away, but I think it's the dry down. The musk and the ambergris is what gives it a little sensuality, a little depth which makes me think more fall winter. Of course, rose is the queen of flowers, so you could wear it spring summer. My next perfume pick is also sitting right in the middle of the fence next to Rose's Musk. It's not quite spring summer. It's not really fall winter either. It's just seasonless. It's Burberry Her. I have the little roller ball. I think it, this is one of the most beautiful daily wear fragrances. It's a sweet gourmand. If you're not already aware, the nose behind this perfume is Francis Kurgian, the master perfumer behind the house, Maison Francis Kurgian, the creator of Baccarat Rouge 540, also created Burberry Her. And a lot of people think this is almost a dupe. I think that has driven a lot of the popularity of Burberry Her is that mindset that it's sort of a less expensive dupe version of Baccarat Rouge 540. There are similarities. In fact, I have been tricked. I have smelled Burberry Her on women before and said to them, oh, you're wearing Baccarat Rouge 540s. So there are similarities. It's only when you smell them side by side that you can pick up the differences. And I think the dry down is different. But the initial scent is very similar. They're so close. It has red and dark berries in the top, a floral heart with jasmine, sensual musk amber in the base. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet. There's just something about it. It instantly boosts my mood. It just makes me smile. It smells so nice. Almost fruity. If I didn't know better, I would think it was a fruity floral fragrance. I guess that's why I sort of associate it more with spring, summer. It could be evening. I think you could also wear this for special occasions. It could be a date night fragrance, but because I think it is appropriate for daytime, I think it would be the perfect choice as an everyday fragrance. You would make a statement if you wore this every day. Signature scent worthy, definitely. We're down to the final four now, and I put these in order so that we're getting lighter, lighter, and lighter. These are all undoubtedly spring, summer fresh, fruity, floral, that sort of vibe. So next I have Giorgio Armani My Way. What a beautiful fragrance. This launched last year and it is kind of an instant classic. It's just a beautiful fragrance. Not necessarily special occasion. It's not overly sexy sensual. It's not really deep and moody. So I wouldn't necessarily wear this in the evenings. It is perfect every single day. It has top notes of bergamot and orange blossom, middle notes of tuberose and jasmine, a base of cedarwood, vanilla, and white musks. I remember reading about the inspiration behind this fragrance and it was supposed to be adventure, kind of creating your own path, wanderlust. That was the imagery behind the campaign. I don't necessarily think that's a great match for this perfume. I find this perfume to be very classic, elegant, very refined, but it's a bit more reserved, maybe even conservative, really beautiful, but there's nothing about it that is overly bright or sparkling, nothing really zesty that's going to make you go, wow, adventure. It's not an exotic fragrance. I think that's the best way to put it. Still very beautiful, and I love that the cap is meant to look like a natural stone because there is a natural beauty about the fragrance. Now the bottle, I think, is the perfect representative of the fragrance inside. Spray. Woof, nice strong mister. 
Mmm, so nice. Even in the top, probably because of the two bros. I was gonna say, you get creaminess in the top. And it's not because of the vanilla in the base, it's that two bros. It's a creamy, floral. You have the citrus. Definitely the bergamot. Mmm. Really nice. And then as it dries down, it gets a little bit softer, really smooth. You're left with the, the musk, vanilla, of course, the creaminess of the tube rose. And it's just a very sophisticated fragrance. Not something you really have to overthink. You could wear this every single day and it would be beautiful. This could definitely be a signature scent. You would smell really nice everywhere you go. Next up is a recent addition to my fragrance collection. It's the new Parfum de Marly Delina La Rose. This was made for everyday wear, spring, summer, captured in a bottle, just the perfect daily wear fragrance, especially if you love the original Delina, but you maybe want to save it for special occasions, save it for evenings. I know I tend to save my favorite fragrances. I'm trying to get away from that and really wear the fragrances that I love the most that are so special, but there are some perfumes that are just not really appropriate for every occasion. They're not necessarily daytime perfumes. They might be special. You might love them. Not something you should be wearing daily or not something you necessarily want to wear running errands or to the doctor's office appointments, to the office. Could be too much. This kind of solves those problems for Delina lovers because it is such a light, fresh, airy interpretation of the original. And I think they are completely separate. When you smell this by itself, it does smell like Delina. When you smell Delina La Rose and compare it directly to the original, totally different fragrances, which is perfect because that means you're not going to duplicate something in your collection if you were to pick this up. So nice. Mm. It's watery. It has this really unexpected aquatic note. It has lychee, pear, bergamot essence in the top, a heart of Turkish rose, peony, and transparent flowers, a base of soft wood, white musk, and vetiver. I know right now that this is going to go down as one of the best perfumes launched in 2021. It's early, but I'm gonna go ahead and call it. Another great daily wear perfume for spring summer is Giorgio Armani Ocean de Joa. This is a very fresh, intoxicatingly fruity floral fragrance. I discovered this in the Sephora perfume sampler set. I believe it was last spring and I instantly fell in love because it, because it is so different from most of the perfumes in my collection. I think this is the only aquatic perfume that I own. It was love at first sniff. I knew I needed it. Keynotes include sparkling pear, water jasmine, and sandalwood. Mmm. so fresh. It's like a sparkling pear fruit salad by the ocean. <laughs> that is how I would describe this fragrance. I took this with me. We took two trips, road trips down to the Keys last September, and I took this with me. It was just the perfect occasion. This fragrance reminds me of the beach, the ocean, not just because it is fresh and kind of watery, but it just relaxes your mood. You spray this fragrance and it's instant zen in a bottle. Not overly strong, just something you could wear every single day. You would probably never get sick of it. A really beautiful, elegant perfume, but not overly elegant. This isn't something that you're going to want to wear for a very special occasion. And it's not really evening either. It's just fresh, light, but incredibly pretty and special. And as much as it reminds me of the ocean being by the water, the beach, it's not really a tropical fragrance, so I think you could wear this anywhere, all occasions, running errands. You could do maybe one light spritz and wear this to the gym. You know, some people cringe when they hear gym fragrances, but some people like to wear fragrance to the gym. This would be that type of scent. It's just non-offensive, 
anywhere. Last but certainly not least, rounding out our list of 10 perfumes perfect every day, D&G number three, Limperatrice, one of the best fruity floral fragrances I have ever ever smelled. I had a visceral reaction the first time I discovered this fragrance. I happened to walk into Sephora. You'll have to pardon me if I tell the same story every single time, but in case you haven't heard the story, I walked into Sephora back to the fragrance while I was discovering new fragrances last spring. I smelled this fragrance. I sprayed it on the blotter card and it was wow oh my gosh i think i probably said that out loud to myself it just kind of blew me away it's a standout even though it's not one of those fragrances that is so unique so exotic it's not going to be a special occasion fragrance it just smells so good since picking it up and talking about it in fragrance videos from time to time, I have heard from people who say they don't like this fragrance, it's overplayed, people build it up too much, it's just not that special. It's not an overly special fragrance. It is the perfect everyday spray with abandon type of scent. I, I like it. I can't help it. I think it is just so perfect. It makes my mouth water. It is like an elegant fruit salad. It's a sparkling, vibrant fragrance with notes of kiwi, watermelon, with a base of sandalwood. I like that it's clean. It's pretty simple. It's just a clean, classic fragrance, not overly complicated. And that's part of the appeal. Wow, I get so much watermelon, fancy watermelon. That is what it smells like, perfect for 4th of July, picnics, being outside. So nice and very affordable. I just checked. It looks like it's sold out on the Sephora website. You can purchase it from other retailers and I think it's even less expensive. But this bottle is $80. This is a 3.3 fluid ounce bottle. Not a terrible price. I love this bottle. I love the label. It looks very refined. And then you smell it and it's so bright and happy. And that completes my list of perfect everyday perfumes. These are the staples in any fragrance collection. Even though I wouldn't necessarily grab these first for a special occasion, they are versatile. They're just beautiful perfumes. They're not boring. They're always appropriate and that is important to have. So that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I wanna hear from you guys. What are your suggestions for everyday perfumes? Drop me a comment. We will keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face will be down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.